Hello, beloved. It is Tuesday, September the 8th, 2020. My name is Greg Stevens, and it's Victory Update. I'm here with my good friend, Tim Fox. Good afternoon. How are you? I am great. I, I, it, this is, I love doing this program where we can talk directly to our partners and share the Word of God with them and encourage them. It is a good thing, and we have a great day today. We've got a wonderful praise break in store for us. And we have a wonderful guest with us from Melbourne, Florida. Clyde Oliver's with us. Clyde, are you there? Yes, there he I is. Am. He's going to Thank be with so us much. and tell us about uh, early days in ministry and then what they've been doing there at the church. Yeah. And so we look forward to hearing from you in a moment. And uh, before we do that, though, you have a gift offer for this week. I do. This is called Gloria Copeland Spiritual Antioxidants Patience. Okay, we're not doing that. How many? No, no. <laughs> Patience. Patience. Yes, how many of us need that? I'm going to pass this around the control room. I promise you everybody yes, needs yes, this. Yes. This is regularly $12. Uh, no, it's $12, regularly $30. Uh, all you have to do is go to govictory.com slash victory update. Only $12. The fruit of the Spirit, patience. I know a lot. I want of, patience and I want I it now. Of, <laughs> I want it now. I, want it I know now. a lot of people that, that uh, I'm buying that for. Maybe, right. maybe you need to get somebody. Okay, I want to remind you that the Partner Service Center is open and our prayer ministers are there right now. Licensed prayer ministers to pray with you. The number is 877 877- 281-6297-877-281-6297. So many called in this morning, Tim. Yeah. Had the honor and privilege of being on there with Pastor Quest. And a lot of things about families. Oh, wow. A lot of people needing deliverance and, and things in their family situations. Well, God has an answer That's for that. right. We encourage you to, to, to call the number and somebody will agree with you and pray with you in that. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. You ready to do this thing? <laughs> do it. Uh, let's take a look at today's news in the spirit of faith with our friend Mike Garofalo. Mike. Thanks, Greg. President Trump continues to take heat for what an article in the Atlantic magazine alleges he did during a trip to France back in 2018. The article, according to anonymous sources, says Mr. Trump said he didn't want to go to a cemetery there in France and visit the graves of American service members from World War I because they were losers. But the president's actions in public toward the U.S. military have never indicated any lack of respect. And even John Bolton, the president's former national security advisor who was on that trip to France, said the trip to the cemetery was canceled due to the weather. And he never heard President Trump make the alleged comments. Saturday morning, when the decision was made not to go to Anmar, that he made uh, the disparaging remarks, and, and he did not. Also over the weekend, the Atlantic editor-in-chief appeared on CNN and admitted that the trip to the cemetery may have, in fact, been canceled due to the weather. In an effort to show their support for the president as the attacks over the supposed cemetery incident continue, almost 700 veterans signed a letter supporting President Trump. As the Epic Times reports, the open letter from 674 veterans talks about the, quote, recent baseless media attacks against President Trump from anonymous sources. The letter goes on to say, anyone who knows President Trump has seen his love and reverence for our military and veterans. That is why we veterans from every generation are writing today to reaffirm our support for President Trump. Speaking of President Trump, he used a Labor Day news conference from the White House to criticize his presidential election opponent. He took aim at Joe Biden over his plans on how to handle the coronavirus pandemic. And Trump assailed the Democratic ticket and put the halting economic recovery under the best light, asserting that Democratic presidential contender Joe Biden and his vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris would destroy the country and would destroy this economy. The Biden plan begins with a $4 trillion tax hike, and that will end everything, including growth. There won't be growth. There'll be total contraction. The U.S. economy has been steadily rebounding from its epic collapse in the spring as many businesses have reopened and rehired some laid-off employees. And President Trump is expected to rally his base when it comes to the Supreme Court. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows earlier today said the president will release a list of potential Supreme Court picks soon. Mr. Trump had released a similar list during the 2016 campaign. And also over the weekend, a violent Monday on in Oregon as pro-Trump supporters clashed with counter-protesters. A number of counter-protesters were arrested, although the number was not immediately known. Meantime, the day before the violence on Sunday, dozens of Trump supporters gathered just south of Portland in Oregon City. 
The Labor Day caravan rally was planned, but organizers said that caravan would not enter the county where the city of Portland is located. On August 29th, a member of conservative group Patriot Prayer was killed after their caravan entered downtown Portland. Last Thursday, the suspected shooter was killed as police moved in to arrest him. He reportedly had a gun on him when he was shot. Top administration officials said on Monday they're continuing talks with Democrats over another stimulus bill. It's expected to include relief for unemployed workers, schools, and the health care industry. But the two sides are reportedly far apart when it comes to a dollar amount. While the Democrats want at least $2 trillion in aid, Republicans are often closer to $1.3 trillion. President Trump said he is not negotiating directly with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer since he says they don't want to make a deal. And as the presidential election nears, a big component of making sure that every vote counts is the U.S. Postal Service. So reports this past week that piles of unopened mail have been found in Glendale, California have to be concerning. It's not clear whether the mail was stolen and dumped or possibly dumped by a postal carrier. But an investigation is underway and the Postal Service has declined to comment on the incidents. As the presidential race enters its final post-convention, post-Labor Day phase, Joe Biden spent some time over the weekend in Pennsylvania. That's where he collected three endorsements from organized labor. On Monday, the Democratic nominee held a virtual town hall with the AFL-CIO. Biden also met with a group of former military members and community leaders in Lancaster. And the U.S. Forest Service is closing all eight national forests in Southern California due to dangerous wildfires. California has already set a record with two million million acres burned by wildfires. And over the weekend, California Governor Gavin Newsom declared a state of emergency in five counties due to the danger from the fires. And the governor said California is working with the federal officials for assistance. Back to you in the Victory Studio. Thanks, Mike. Do you know what I like about news in the spirit of faith? You just saw a news story. I guarantee you, you will not see a national on a national platform like here anywhere and that is all of those mail all of that bunch of mail <laughs> yeah team. yeah yeah this this is the postal service that's supposed to handle all that mailing voting <laughs> so let me ask you a question if i gave you 500 dollars cash right now with right. the stipulation it has to be mailed to you would you want to mail it absolutely not absolutely not no it's no. 500 cash right it's like having a lottery ticket are you going to mail that lottery ticket in or are you, <laughs> you going to take, <laughs> take it down there and get it cash you're going to take it down i guarantee you that you are okay now you were part of something really cool this last weekend over the over the holiday. And if you watched Home Group last, was it last Wednesday? We had Philip Renner in here. Yeah. And you were part of the, uh, the uh, Chicago event that they had. Yeah, Worship Without Limits. Worship Without Limits, thank you. I was slipping what it was. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, the Lord told Philip in early August that he wanted Philip to go to the heart of Chicago and hold a praise and worship service. Yeah. And uh, literally, less than a month later, he's there doing that worship service right in the heart of Chicago. Well, you were there and you sent us an update and I want to play it for you right now. Hello, KCM EMIC. God told Philip Renner to bring worship to the heart of Chicago. And with your help, that's exactly what he's done. Let's take a look at some of the sights and sounds of Worship Without Limits, Chicago.
This is the most epic stage in Chicago. I mean, you can't get any more central and get any more trouble than to do it right there on that stage. We're praising God, we're bringing His presence here, and I believe the church is gonna stand up. The true church of Jesus Christ is gonna get encouraged to stand up and preach the gospel and make disciples. This event was so impactful, and I know it resonated in the city of Chicago, far beyond this square. Yes, this is what our city needs, and it is just amazing. You can feel the transformation. You could feel the healing, you could feel the deliverance. You could just feel it was just a great move of God that happened here this evening. This event is part of a move of God that is sweeping this nation. And all of us at KCM and MIC and all of our partners are right in the middle of it. Together, we are all changing the world one life at a time. Isn't that wonderful? And you were part of that. Thank you for being part of that. Listen, I want to I want to share something. I want to put something in perspective. There was a little graphic that came up on the screen that talked about no homicides mm -hmm. in Chicago on that day. Here's here's I'll put that in perspective. The daily homicide rate in Chicago is 23.8. Let that sink in. Yeah. 23.8. Labor Day weekend of 2019, 44 people were shot and nine were killed. On this Labor Day, on that day that they sang praise and worship, yeah. guess how many? Zero. And there was a, a protest, another group protesting about four or five blocks down from where we were uh, before we came, before we started our event. None of those folks came to our event. We had no issues down there. There you go. But there were some people across the street. There were some Satanists across the street but that did not come across the street. I guess they couldn't break that barrier. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't want to, <laughs> they cross, didn't the, want to cross. cross the street. All right, guys, you were there too, right? The guys in the band, yeah. you guys were all there? Yeah. We were where? In Chicago, was it great? In Dodge City? No, no, in Chicago. Were you oh, in no, Chicago? we weren't. We you weren't were in Chicago. No. Okay. We Never were there mind. in spirit. You were there in spirit. So yes. now they're going to sing a song called No Longer. <laughs> Isn't it great to be live? Michael Hal, Jacob Smith, and, and uh, <laughs> Dean Bims. <laughs> not David Ellis. Here you go. Sing, guys. <laughs> you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear, but I am a child.
That's great. Amen. That is so good. That's one of the keys to everything is knowing that he's your father. Jesus said that, our father, which is art in heaven. Once you know that you're a child, you're his child, everything changes. Let me introduce you to a guest that has been a good friend of this ministry for a long time. Pastor Clyde Oliver has preached the gospel throughout the United States and around the world. The emphasis of Pastor Oliver's, Oliver's message and ministry is developing maturity in the believer. He and his wife, Marion, currently pastor Maranatha Christian Center, two locations in Florida, and their vision is to prepare the people for the service of the Lord. He got his ministry start right here at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, one of the first employees of the ministry. And he was the only, the single only catcher in healing school for many years. I bet you got a lot of stories with that. I bet he does. You can yes. connect with him at mccmelbourne.org and clydeoliver.org. Tell us, tell us about the start in the early years, Clyde. Well, um, I began listening to Brother Copeland back in uh, 1977 on the radio. And um, <clears throat> he, he spoke a language that really spoke to me. And I just began to, um, every morning, Monday through Friday, I would always listen to the broadcast. Um, I, I had an opportunity to um, forsake, let that go when I accepted a job once, show how God, the favor of God is. Um, I went and applied for this one job. <clears throat> Brother Copeland came on at 8.30 in the morning from 8.30 to 8.45. And uh, the job began at eight o'clock. And so I was told that, uh, Clyde, uh, the job is yours. And I hesitated and the supervisor asked me why I was hesitating. And I told him, I said, I began listening to this guy on the radio by the name of Kenneth Copeland. And for the last uh, eight, nine months, and it's gonna present a challenge for me and I really don't want to um, be in that predicament. So he said, what's the problem? I said, um, well, if I began work here at eight o'clock, then all of a sudden um, Copeland comes on 8.30, I won't be able to watch it. And I've really been growing by listening to uh, Brother Copeland. And he said, that would be no problem. Uh, by all means, just at 8.30, come to work, uh, and then uh, come to work at eight o'clock and at 8.30, then you can begin, uh, just come in my office and listen to the broadcast. Wow. So for the next year and a half, I began to do that. And um, God spoke to me right after that and said, I want you to move to Texas <sighs> and I want you to work with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Yeah. Mind you, I did not have a job. At that time, uh, Brother Copeland was talking about the revival capital of the world. And uh, that just spoke to me that I want to be a part of that. And so I did, like um, the old saying goes, I packed up everything and I headed uh, east. Uh, excuse me, I headed yeah, west. west. Yeah, yeah, west. <laughs> yes. And, um, and so uh, and I moved from Virginia and I was there for 11 years. And uh, when I first got there, um, the property was nothing like it is now, yeah. um, which has been tremendous upgrades uh, since then. Yeah. Um, I, I was I worked in the in the department where production department where we produced all the cassette tapes. Now, Clyde, let me jump then in here. Let me jump in here real quick because let me give okay. let me give people a little bit of perspective because mm -hmm. I worked with you down there in yes. that distribution center. And when yes. you talk about cassette tapes, back then mm -hmm. the cassette tapes would come out, and we had this machine that actually put the paper labels on the cassette tapes. We'd have to yes. stick them in there, and they'd put them on. Who would have thought mm -hmm. all these years later you would be doing what you're doing, and I'm doing what I'm doing? Hey, God knows, man. It's, and it's just a privilege to be able to have been a part of what's, uh, what's happened there and continues to happen there. And I agree with Brother Copeland that Eagle Mountain is the revival capital of the world. Praise God. And uh, such a privilege to have uh, worked with you, Tim. And, and I'm always blessed every time I get to be with you and, uh, and be in your presence. Uh, and just to see what God is doing through you, it's such a blessing. Um, so I worked in that department for... Uh, two or three years, and then from there, I went from there to Crusades. And one of the things that uh, helped me a lot in working with the ministry is that I always had to listen to the teaching uh, of Brother Copeland, whether I'm checking tapes or, and then as I came on the Crusade team, I was Crusade sales manager, and I almost had to know where uh, people could find uh, certain things that Brother Copeland taught on what series, I still remember all the number series and everything. Um, 
And so it was, it was just a blessing. It was a great time of growth for me and uh, spiritually. And I th thought about it one day. I said, of all the places on the earth that God could have sent me, he sent me to Fort Worth, Texas to work with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And um, it's made a difference in my life. And I so, believe that's one reason why I'm still here. That's where I was headed. That's exactly why you're in the position that you're in now. All of that seed that you sowed back then. Now you have a meeting every year at the beginning of the year. And we, as we were beginning this year, God had already spoken to you, having learned from what you learned from Brother Copeland to be ready to tell your people with all this COVID stuff. Share with us about that. <laughs> Yes, every year um, we started our church in um, 2001. And so every year the Lord, he, sp he spoke to me to be have what I call uh, faith for. And of course, this year has been faith for 2020. And uh, he said, I want you to inoculate the people and prepare them for the coming year. And I said, OK, Lord, what is it that you want me to share with them? And I began to share uh, things that would help them sustain them regardless of what crisis or whatever thing that they faced in life, that they'll be able to uh, make it through. Um, some people think because you walk by faith and live by faith that you don't go through anything. Yeah. But Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, he said that uh, we, we will have things that we will go through. And so um, I let our people know that. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, when they came out and said that the country is going to shut down, um, and also they talked about the virus. One of the things that we had done, we called the church forward because we believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so in um, James chapter five, <clears throat> verse 14 and 15, the scripture says, is anyone sick among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick mm -hmm. and the Lord will raise them up. And if he's committed sins, they will be forgiven him. So one of the things that we did when they first came out and talked about uh, what this virus was going to do and all, we we uh, called everybody in the church forward. We anointed their head with oil. We prayed the prayer of faith over them. And uh, we say we claimed our immunity to COVID-19. Come on. Yeah. Praise so God. you already had the vaccine. Now that reminds me, yes. Victory Update began at the very beginning of, of COVID and Brother mm -hmm. Copeland was on here one mm -hmm. night and he did the exact same thing that you did. Yeah. He, mm -hmm. he laid hands on every single one of the people mm -hmm. in the studio yeah. and in the control room, the production crew, yeah. and anointed mm -hmm. us all with oil and not a single one, to my Isn't knowledge, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. has, has, gotten, has gotten ill. Yeah. He, he yes. literally, he saved us yeah. mm -hmm. that night, according to that verse right now. Now, I know that Florida is opening up more. And I think yes. this week, some things are opening up for you as well. Yes. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out for our governor, DeSantis. Uh, early on, he said that the church is essential. And I thank God for that. That's why it's important, the leaders that you have, because they make a difference in decisions that they make. And so uh, we never shut down uh, the church or anything. We've been going ever since uh, we started. And uh, this, I think, is tomorrow. Uh, there was another order that was lifted by um, Governor DeSantis that we can go into uh, nursing home facilities and places Praise like God. that <laughs> and visit people and pray for them, whatever we need to do. And um, there are people that are there that have not seen relatives or ministers since March. Wow. And so we're grateful for that opportunity to be able to go in there. And uh, I believe God that some people are going to get up and walk out in Jesus name. Amen. Now, Clyde, you recently had an opportunity to practice what you just been preaching right here. Your mm -hmm. wife, Marion, was involved in a pretty serious accident and it wasn't yes, good, sir. was it? Talk about how you guys walked through that. Well, you know, um, my wife had just left uh, going to work that morning. And when she, uh, I guess it's about two miles from the house. She wound up uh, uh, going through a four-way stop. And as she did, a car just uh, T-boned her right on her door and um, running about 40, 50 miles an hour Ford Explorer. And um, it was just the word, the grace of God and the angels of God that were involved. Uh, one of the things that we do, we pray, um, my wife and I, we pray uh, over ourselves, our family, uh, we cover one another with the blood of Jesus. 
And we, de- we believe what the scripture said, no hurt, harm or calamity shall come nigh us in the name of Jesus. And when something like that happened, um, my wife said when she realized after the car stopped moving around that um, she was still alive, she said, devil, I'm not dying today. I'm not dying tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to live and going to declare the works of the Lord. And so with there was glass broken out, of course, with the direct hit glass broken out of the windows of, of her car. And actually, she was driving my car. <laughs> and uh, and so none of the glass went into her skin or anything like that. All the glass just fell to the to the uh, floor of the car and outside of the car. And so we thank God for that. Uh, most people that I showed them the pictures of what happened, they 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 get a somber look on their face and they're wondering, uh, you know, were, they, were there any survivors? Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, there she is right there. <laughs> so. Uh, we thank God for his grace and, and his angels are uh, working and moving even now. Amen. So, Pastor, could you do thing right here as we wind up today? Could you take one minute here and, and pray over all the partners and everybody that's watching us? OK, my privilege. Father, we rejoice and we thank you for this opportunity to pray for the partners of KCM and, and uh, all his friends. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, I decree and declare that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper in Jesus name. I say and declare that you shall be delivered out of whatever situation and circumstance that you're facing even now. Father, I thank you right now for your involvement in the lives of the partners of this ministry. We decree right now that in Jesus name, they shall uh, recover everything that has been lost. We decree over their life that they shall be healed. They shall rise and walk in the name of Jesus and we give you all the glory. Father, we also decree that between now and the end of the year, that there shall be a great recovery take place where the children of God is concerned in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you for it, amen. Amen, and I receive that. Tim and I are in agreement with it. His name is Pastor Clyde Oliver. You can find him in Melbourne, Florida, mccmelbourne.org or clydeoliver.org. Sir, thank you so much. (laughs) for joining Thank us you. today and, and being with us. It has been an honor and a, and a blessing yeah. uh, to have you Thank on you, today. He's Look that good, church up. Yeah, he's a good one. He is a good, he's a good one. He's a good one. All right, Amen. I wanna thank you for being with us today here on Victory Update. Do not forget about we're having a special church service tomorrow night at Eagle Mountain International Church at eight Eastern, seven Central. Then also don't forget uh, America Stands. America Stands. Election Thursday coverage night. is coming Thursday night and you won't wanna miss that nine Eastern, eight Central. We're gonna end Victory Update today with some more praise break music and we'll see you tomorrow.